Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colts, and this video is actually an excerpt from our full walkthrough of Zoho survey uh, that we recorded in October of 2022. Um, in this video, we'll be walking through some of the overview of the basic settings in Zoho surveys um, and how to actually add and customize your relevant fields. Um, if you do find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if it sparks any questions or feedback, please be sure to leave those in the comment section as we do try to read and respond to every single one of those weekly on our podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Without any further ado, let's get right on into the tutorial. Alrighty, so here we have a bright and shiny new surveys instance here where we've not really done any work. Um, so working off of a clean slate here. Um, on this first little page again, like Brett mentioned, there's not a lot of like deep, deep settings for surveys as a whole. Um, really a lot of the settings management that you do is gonna be specific to a given survey. Um, a couple quick things just to make sure of when you're on this page. Uh, surveys is a little notorious for being too easy to spin up your own department. So if you have a lot of people who are working in survey, make sure to get them all permissioned properly before they ever try to access the application. Again, not the end of the world if someone spins up a department of their own, but it surely makes life a lot easier if they all just get assigned to your primary account right out of the gate. Um, up here at the top, right, similar to most of the Zoho applications, you have your little icon menu where you can jump into the account management, any portals you have, and some basic setup for the application. So I'll kind of show this just really quickly here. Um, really, the, the top level settings that are across the entire application just involve things like any users you want to have. Um, if you want to white label any surveys and kind of host them on your own domain, right? So if you wanted like a feedback.zanata.com, you would do that through here. Uh, domain authentication, obviously, if you're going to be sending these out through Zoho surveys, um, you want to make sure that you have your domain authenticated. Most of the time, though, you're going to send these from CRM or from, you know, maybe Zoho campaigns. So not too big of a deal. But if you are going to deliver them natively through here, you'll want to make sure you've got that set up. There are kind of a variety of integrations as well to the various other Zoho applications. Big one, of course, is going to be Zoho CRM. Um, but other ones that I'll highlight, right, is you can have all of your survey data right to a Zoho sheet. Um, won't go down a rabbit hole, but it's actually not a bad idea. It's much easier to report on if you have it do this rather than using the default data. Um, you know, triggering deluge functions after a survey has been submitted. And then, of course, offering up surveys through Sales IQ. And then a variety here of other kind of options, Clickatel, Twilio, and SMS Magic, really just around SMS distribution of the surveys. Um, from there, really, you do have some basic portal information. You know, what's the name of the portal? Not much there. And then some audit logs. If you do need to see what's been happening in the system, right, you can come in here and get that as a top down view. Um, under the department setup, again, I'll skip department users. It's really just setting up your users there. And then here you can go ahead and create different roles and permission sets for these departments. So if you have certain people who maybe you don't want them to be able to delete anything, maybe they should just be able to go in and view the data or pull some of the reports out. Um, you know, you can set them up accordingly here. Again, these permissions are nothing crazy. It's it's not as granular as, you know, something like CRM or Zoho Books. So we're not going to spend too much time there. Um, Zoho supporting documentation is actually pretty good on those if you need any best practices. Um, but so now that we've covered, again, the, the fairly brief overview on the settings for surveys as a whole, we can go ahead and create our first survey. So I'll go ahead and choose to create it. Now there's two different paths you can take, right? You can create a survey from scratch, right? Where you're gonna add every single field individually, um, or you can choose them from a template. Uh, they actually have a ton of templates in here, and it can be a pretty good place to start, right? So maybe you don't know every single thing that you wanna do on a you know customer satisfaction survey, um, but so you could start with something that's kind of a template that you can use um, to actually get yourself out the gate and uh, you know running forward. For us, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one so I can show you how to add some fields and a couple of the considerations that you might want there. We're going to just go ahead and call this a 
client satisfaction survey. Um, it'll ask you for a category on these. Uh, it doesn't really do much on the back end, so just pick the one that fits the best. Don't worry too much about what category it falls into if there isn't an obvious option. I'm going to drop it under customer satisfaction because that's kind of an easy one for what we're looking to do here. And now I'll go ahead and create our survey. So right out of the gate, right, we are starting with kind of a blank template here. Um, some of the first things to take a look at when we're actually building out the survey. Um, of course, they do have a ton of different question types here in surveys. Um, this is one thing where if you're comparing it to Zoho Forms, right, there are some differences in the types of uh, questions that you can ask using Zoho Surveys. So a common one, right, that people really care about when you're surveying is, of course, your NPS. That's your net promoter score. It's basically a way to ask people how likely are you to recommend us to a, uh, you know, somebody that you know. So maybe I'll give this a quick name here. And uh, I'm not the English major between Brett and I, so my spelling here needs a little bit of work. Um, within this question, you can actually ask it with uh, rich text as well. So if you wanted to embed any images or even videos that you want to include to kind of contextualize some of the questions that you're asking, you can surely do that. Um, you can choose whether or not to make it mandatory. And then each of these different fields are going to have a variety of options, right, that you can use. For an NPS survey, we kind of have a way to categorize them with numbers, smiley faces, circles, rectangles, you know, all these different types of uh, formatting options that we have for the value. For me, I'm just going to keep it simple and use numbers. Uh, we're going to do some labels. So zero is going to be definitely not. And 10 might be something like absolutely. A couple advanced options here. Again, and sometimes these are specific to fields uh, or different field types, and sometimes they are not. Um, so if you wanted to have a default answer, maybe I want to pre-populate it with 10 because, you know, we rock and everyone recommend us. Um, most of the time for things like this, don't pre-populate stuff because people are just going to leave it. Um, you can actually add an optional comment section as well as a hint, which is kind of like the tooltip, right? So if you wanted to give them a little bit more context of what you're looking for, you can do that here as well. I'm going to go ahead and save this for now. And now other things that we might want, you know, maybe we want to include their name, maybe their email address in the form. Um, so we can actually go ahead and drag in some additional fields. So over here on the left for something like a name, I'll go ahead and add the full name field. We'll see if this comes out with two different sections, very similar to Zoho Forms. So it's kind of one field, but it has two values in it. Um, just kind of a nice UI thing. A lot of people are kind of used to seeing names set up this way. Um, so I'll go ahead and save that. You notice I dropped it in up above, so we can kind of have a nice flow to our um, you know, survey here. And then maybe I want their email just to make sure that when they submit this, I can tie it back to their record in the CRM. Go ahead and save that. And so now we've got the beginnings of a pretty simple NPS survey. Um, obviously, based on the types of surveys that you're making, right? Sometimes they have to be long. Sometimes they're going to be shorter. A general rule of thumb is to keep surveys as brief as possible where you're able to capture the data that you care about. Um, a big reason the NPS is so popular is partially because it's so simple. You're not really asking them to fill out a lot, any long form information or provide anything custom. Right? It's just a top-down way to ask them, how did we do? Assuming that if we did well, they're pretty likely to recommend us. Now, I'll highlight over here on the left a couple of the fields that we do use pretty often for the um, you know, surveys tool. Multiple choice and drop-downs, right? These are pretty important ones. If you want to give people a choice from a select list, um, the trick is to make sure that you use the right one. Some of them allow for people to choose more than one with these many answers and some uh, only allow them to choose one. So just be cognizant when you are doing those around you know, which way you wanna go. Should they be able to include more than one option or not? You can actually give them image selections as well. It's kind of an interesting one we've used in the past for you know, here's two design options, pick the one that looks better for you. Um, scrolling down, of course, NPS is really important, uh, an important one to keep in mind. 
Booleans, right? So quick check boxes. Do you opt in for this type of communication? You could use something like that. Matrix choices allow you to essentially give them a grid and let them pick from throughout it. We're not going to go too granular on that right now. That could, you know, if we go too deep on these, it'll uh, it'll take our whole uh, session here. Um, and then lastly, down at the bottom, you can actually allow them to upload files as well as sign off on the survey. I will highlight this is not like a Zoho sign or DocuSign substitute. This is like a very basic approval signature, but don't send like a contract through Zoho survey and have them sign it. Uh, you could find yourself in hot water just because it's not up to snuff with all of the compliance required for a true digital signing um, you know, functionality. So now that we've added just a handful of fields here, um, we're going to jump over to our settings and just cover some of the basic ones that we'll want to have in mind as we're getting our survey set up. Um, so again, through here, we can drop in a logo if we'd like to. So maybe we want to add our Zanata logo, or maybe we want to add a logo specific to the survey if you have one in mind. Um, footer, pretty similar, right? So we can actually set up any custom footer information here. Thanks for taking our survey. Just drop this right in there. Give it a save. Um, down the line here, a couple other settings. We won't take too long on these. Um, we can actually show a progress bar as they're working through the survey. If it is long, highly recommend that you do that. For something like a quick NPS survey, you don't want to clutter the screen. Um, but if you're asking 20, 30 questions, definitely want to include something like that. Question numbers, pretty similar. Good for long surveys, not necessary for short ones. You can actually enable CAPTCHA through here. We're not going to do this for this session here, but it actually does a like a Zoho version of a CAPTCHA. Um, and then this is kind of a nice one. Skip the first page if all questions are pre-populated. Um, I'll show you what pre-populating looks like in surveys in a little bit. But a lot of the times, if you're sending from CRM, you'll want to have that enabled and then break out some of your content accordingly. Basic stuff like renaming your buttons lives in here as well. Um, I'm going to skip these next ones real quick. I mean, languages, right? We can choose different languages. Introduction page would be if you wanted to have kind of like a landing page for your survey. You know, so the following survey is going to ask you questions around A, B, and C. You know, we appreciate you giving us your honest feedback and so on and so forth if you wanted a kind of landing page view when someone drops into the survey. Terms and conditions, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You can actually put a timer on here. Um, you know, Brett and I actually saw a long time ago uh, something that Zoho built from within surveys around kind of like courses and quizzes using this timer feature. And it's actually pretty cool. Um, so you can actually manage how much time is spent on each of the pages and track and make sure that, you know, hey, people are taking really long on page two of this. Like, what's going on that's that's kind of catching them up on that page? Save and continue later can also be set up here. And then we can define, you know, what the end page looks like, what the disqualification page, should they be able to edit responses later? You know, where should they drop off once they've completed the survey? And all those kind of basic configurations that you would expect. Again, if you use Doho Forms, a lot of this stuff is pretty similar on that side. Next little section here, we're really not going to dig into because you know design. We could take a whole hour and really dive into all these settings. Um, but you can actually create custom themes for your surveys. Um, you can pull them from a variety of default themes, or you can actually go ahead and create your own. Um, again, we're not going to go too deep on this, but it's kind of your standard editor. Change the fonts, change the spacing of things, um, you know, change any of the color coding that you'd like to adjust um, on your survey. Um, and then Hub, I'm just going to do a little teaser. This is where we're going to circle back around to here in a moment. Um, but within Hub, you can actually do some of those integrations that we talked about, some of our triggers, right, so that we're able to trigger emails or custom functions or post webhooks externally, right? So if you want to send this data somewhere outside of Zoho, you could do that through here. And then you can also do some on-page tracking on you know, where people are landing on the survey from, as well as how they're making or how they're interacting with the page um, via some of these tracking tools. But so really, again, the, the, the core customization of the survey does not need to be anything crazy, right? You're going to go ahead and create your survey. You're going to drop in any fields that you need. Um, always a good idea to do a little preview as you go, just to take a look at what things look like. So here I've dropped in my previous or preview section here. We can see all of our fields. We see the little footer that we added down at the bottom there. We can look at it on a variety of different devices, 
just to make sure that the spacing and sizing of everything looks good, regardless of how somebody is looking at it. Um, more and more people nowadays are using their phones or tablets to interact with surveys like this. So always a good idea to make sure that it's not going to look too bad on one of those devices. Like even here, I could look and see, you know, this isn't bad, but it's a little bit squished, right? And so you might want to direct people to open it up in a certain way, depending on, you know, what content you have on your survey.